tonight, bumper crop in the making. Grain farmers in the Eyre Peninsula expecting something special this harvest season. And who's who in your council? How to vote in the upcoming local government elections. From our seven Spencer Gulf Studios, your nightly news with Madeline Kerr begins now. Good evening, thanks for joining us. For farmers, it's the busiest time of the year. With South Australia's harvest season officially underway, this year's crop is shaping up to be one of the biggest on record. And in lieu of the bumper crop, one leading agricultural company is expanding its operations in order to keep up. Wheat farmers are climbing onto their headers, ready to collect a record-breaking crop. This year's crop has the potential to reach over 11 million tonnes of grain, making it the second largest harvest on the state's record. Despite the latest start this year, the above average rainfall in August has helped get things back on track. The crop particularly on the Air Peninsula is looking like a record crop, biggest crop ever. Um, and secondly across the state it's looking like the, the second biggest crop uh, on record as well. So great conditions across the state which is great. More grain means more job vacancies at Viterra, with an additional 150 positions now available for those looking to get involved this harvest. We've got uh, 1,650 jobs statewide um, and around about four or 500 of those uh, are available on the Air Peninsula. Additionally, Viterra has introduced a refer-a-friend initiative where returning harvest workers can go into a draw to win cash prizes. If, uh, if an employee or a, a casual coming on board refers a friend and also uh, is successful in, in gaining employment, then they're, they're um, eligible for, for a prize. Viterra are now offering accommodation for new employees and have expanded their storage space in preparation for the Air Peninsula's biggest crop to date. We've introduced some additional storage at, at a few of our sites across the network, um, Thevenard, Woodna, um, Streaky Bay. The hours, we're looking to extend all of our hours and try and accommodate as best we can for, for the big season for the growers. 18 exporters have already made forward bookings of 7 million tonnes. The previous record was set during the 2016-17 season, however all signs are towards this season being at the top of the heap. The, the crops are, are looking amazing and they're, they're soaking up all the water so um, yeah, it can turn off any time from now and we're, the gates are open, we're ready to go. To get involved you can visit Viterra's website or contact their office. Henry Millick, 7 Spencer Golf News. Upgrades to the Porphyry Wharf are set to provide an economic boost to the Mid-North. As well as reducing the carbon footprint of South Australia's grain industry, the fresh asphalt will also mean less driving time for our truckies. Sealing the deal on Port Pirie's future. Over 19,000 square metres of previously unsurfaced port area now up to scratch. It didn't meet the, the accreditation to actually for the export the accreditation overseas, so therefore they had to, uh, instead of being able to use the port here, um, some of the, uh, the suppliers had to then take their product down to Adelaide. More than 6,000 tonnes of asphalt has been poured into the precinct as part of the Port Pirie site remediation project. And one of the good things about it, they were able to use some of the, uh, this, the other used material to be able to re reprocess that to actually mix it with the, the bitumen there behind us. Completion of these works is a win for grain growers in the mid-north, as they will save millions of dollars in transport costs. Gone are the days of hauling their crops via road to Port Adelaide, with the opening of the new grain handling terminal at Port Pirie which creates uh, more safety on the roads because uh, you know, we know there's a lot of traffic on the roads, tourism is, is ever increasing and yet the grain industry in, uh, season coming up here, the last thing you want to do have is all these heavy grain trucks on there. The wharf upgrade is also supporting ongoing local employment in Port Piri and more money will go straight into the pockets of our hard-working farmers. Jeff Brock looks forward to seeing the site being utilised in the next couple months when grain harvest begins. Annabelle Francis, 7 Spencer Golf News. It's time to check your mailbox, as most South Australian residents would have now received their local government ballot pack. The State Electoral Commission encouraging voters to take time to get to know their nominees, but not too long, with voting closing on November 10. Now is the time to vote in your local council elections to ensure you are having your say. 
encourage people to keep an eye open for their ballot papers and encourage everyone to, to vote as soon as they get the, the ballot papers. It's easy to put them to one side and forget to do it. By now, a pack has likely arrived in your mailbox containing ballot papers, a candidate profile brochure, a ballot paper envelope, a postal voting guide and a prepaid envelope for returning the relevant papers. Using these materials, you can cast your vote by numbering as many boxes as there are vacancies. Across our region, this mostly means numbering councillors 1 through 9 and placing a 1 in the box of your preferred mayor. It is advised that you complete and post your ballot papers before the 7th of November to ensure it makes it back in time to be counted. If you miss this date, you can place it in the ballot box of your local council office before the cutoff of 5pm on Thursday, November 10. If you haven't received your ballot papers within the next uh, few days, I'd encourage you to contact the Electoral Commissioner. For while a resident still undecided, a Meet the Candidate session will be held at 6 o'clock on Thursday night at the Wyler Secondary College. It's a great opportunity for our community to come out and hear firsthand from all of the candidates that are running in this year's local government elections. Edwin McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. The Ride for Sick Kids charity group teed off its fundraising campaign on Sunday with a golf day. Close to 100 people showed up to the Greens in support of the riders and the Ronald McDonald House. It was a beautiful day to play some golf, as 96 people converged on the Broken Hill Country and Golf Club to support the annual event. I reckon we're going to have raised over $5,000 and that equates to a month's, like a month's accommodation for a family from Broken Hill down in Adelaide when they really need it the most. For the Broken Hill community, the Ronald McDonald House in Adelaide is the closest one they can access and it's still more than five hours away. It goes beyond words. We've got so many families, unfortunately, that need to access the service. Adelaide is the major provider when our kids get sick. For this year's event, the charity decided to do something different. For the first person to get a hole in one on the 13th hole, the prize was a new car. Unfortunately, no one walked away with a brand new car. They were supporting the cause. Uh, everyone had a great time down there. The atmosphere around the 13th hole trying to win that Toyota Yaris, that was something to, something to see. It was a great day. Everyone had a cracking time. Next on the agenda for the group is the trivia night. It will take place at the Radford Pavilion located at the race course. The event has been known to attract up to 400 people. Joshua Mercer, 7, Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, sheep shearers trapped in floodwaters evacuated to Broken Hill. And the Flinders MP calling on the public to let him know what roads need fixing next. Welcome back. Shearers and roustabouts from Monday Monday Station had to be airlifted to Broken Hill on Friday afternoon. 20 workers were left stranded at the station following the extreme weather in the far west and surrounds. With their supplies diminishing, the SES made the decision to fly the workers out. Providing the weather situation doesn't get worse, the evacuees are expected to return to the station on Wednesday. Intersections in Port Lincoln are in for some major upgrades and it's up to the community which ones get priority. Member for Flinders, Sam Telfer, welcoming the proposal from the Department of Infrastructure and Transport. Port Lincoln's much-needed road improvements might not be too far away. Now the Department of Infrastructure and Transport have come forward with new proposals, but they want to hear from the community first. The opportunity is for the community members throughout uh, survey results, emails or even face to face for them to actually have their say and, and have a look at what different designs might look like. Four intersections along Liverpool Street are the main focal point of the proposal, with the member for Flinders saying it's important to accommodate for bigger freight moving vehicles. Liverpool Street has been degrading to a point where we need to make sure investment goes in strongly. And secondly, with the changes that we've had with freight movements and the, the bigger trucks that are using this area now, we really need to make sure that the design is right. Resurfacing roads and pavements also on the cars, as parts of the road have eroded away over time. It's taken a lot of hard work and effort to be able to get the budget allocation to do this project. We need to make sure, firstly, the pavement work, 
the actual surface is done properly because it's degrading to a point that is really challenging for people. Community information sessions will be held at the Nautilus Arts Centre on Thursday the 20th of October and Friday the 21st. Members of the public will have until the 11th of November to make submissions. Whether there's a support in the community for a change, maybe a, a traffic light arrangement or other arrangements coming in. These four intersections in particular here on Liverpool Street get a lot of movement. Henry Millick, 7 Spencer Golf News. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month and Paul Peary is fortunate enough to have its very own breast cancer nurse who ensures no one battles the diagnosis alone, providing physical and emotional support. For Australian women, the chances of being diagnosed with breast cancer is one in seven. Rosalind Mayfield has been a McGrath breast care nurse in Port Pirie for eight years. Her passion for the foundation and what it stands for is admirable. Jane was only 31 when she was diagnosed with breast cancer. Quite a lot of the focus of the, breast, uh, of the McGrath Foundation is on younger women being aware that they need to check their breasts and of course ongoing as you get older to have mammograms. The McGrath Foundation's aim is to ensure no one goes through breast cancer without the care of a dedicated breast care nurse. The foundation looking out for women in regional areas. So just communicating with the healthcare team in Adelaide and um, organising things in a more streamlined way for people. Breast care nurses support their patients from the time of diagnosis throughout treatment and beyond. You meet so many wonderful people and um, learn so much from your, from your clients. As part of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, pink ribbons are on display throughout the city of Port Pirie. To learn more about the McGrath Foundation and how you can help, visit their website. Annabelle Francis, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. A fresh push from the CFS recruitment team for more volunteer admin staff and contemporary art, live music and more coming to the Gawler Laneway. Welcome back. Regional Council CEOs from across the Spencer Gulf came to Port Augusta earlier this month to discuss ways of improving local government. The CEOs heard from the Ombudsman regarding the local elections and driving positive change in local councils, but also a need to address mental health. In the world of a CEO, you can be very isolated because you're at the top of the organisation, you have to deal with a number of matters, whether it be operational or within the elected field or community complaints. And when you deal with some more complex matters, for example with the Ombudsman, which are subject to confidentiality and, and relevant investigation. Mr Johnson has flagged a support group for CEOs who are struggling with stressful environments. To prepare for the upcoming fire danger season, the CFS is busy recruiting and training new volunteers. But fireys say boots on the ground are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the opportunities on offer. The more hands, the lighter the work. The CFS are currently recruiting additional volunteers to join what is the largest volunteer organisation in South Australia. Over 10,000 members uh, and we're keen to see if we can get some more people to come and join us uh, whilst we uh, do what we do in, in the region. This season the CFS is especially focused on recruiting community members with office based skills such as administration, finance, mapping or logistics to work in one of their various offices across the state, delivering vital information to firefighters and community members core in tough spots. Behind every frontline person, there's plenty of, of stuff that's required behind the scenes. And if those behind the scenes things aren't done, the front line's not effective. The CFS says plenty of hands-on experience will be provided from the first day of training. At the end of the day, we're, we're looking around anywhere in country South Australia, from the smallest town in the far, farthest reaches of the state down to the biggest centre at somewhere like Port Augusta or Port Pirie or Wyala or Port Lincoln. Interested community members with daytime availability are encouraged to apply via the CFS website or the volunteer recruiting hotline. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. A new event is coming to the Broken Hill Heritage Festival next year. Glamfest will be a one-night art extravaganza 
featuring local and interstate artists, as well as live music and food stalls. The idea of having a laneway festival in Broken Hill has been cooking for some time. Next year, that idea will turn into a reality, with West Darling Arts working with City Council to bring Gawler Place to life. Looking at uh, Gawler Place and just thinking it just had a lot of potential for, you know, like just for um, something like a festival. With the Silver City's rich art history, as well as its many laneways, it is a surprise an event like this hasn't happened before. And this is the first time with involving sort of artists to create works specifically for the event as well. So yeah, no, so a first, first one. The artists taking part have already started work on their creations, as it may be a long process for them. So it's not just about sort of creating the artwork, it's also about sort of working in the town and with the, with the people, with the art, you know, as the heritage city that we are now. As for why Gawler Place was picked, it's not just because of its central location. Uh, for anyone who's ever been down there, which I dare say just about everyone in Broken Hill has, um, it has that sort of, it has all these beautiful buildings, old buildings, which are actually like shop fronts. Joshua Mercer, 7, Spencer Gulf News. Stay with us after the break. The Wyala Young Gun dominates for Port, but it wasn't enough to get them over the line. And we recap today's weather and take a look at the week ahead with Alex Sykes. Welcome back. Despite Wyala's Hannah Ewing smashing through with disposals, Port Adelaide came up heartbreakingly short against North Melbourne at the weekend. Meantime, the Crows were walloped by ladder leader Brisbane in a rare loss. Port Adelaide were showing that while they're down this season, they're certainly not out. Pushing ahead of the ruse by the end of the first quarter in the first Pride round at Alberton Oval. Mules has got it. Mules slipping. That spooked the competition, with North Melbourne forced into action with five goals to one afterwards, allowing the blue and white to take the win by 25 points. Especially the first half, I um, really took it up to us, but I think we uh, got the ball in our terms in the in the last half and kind of played how we wanted to play, which was good, that forward half um, game style. So I think, yeah, it was an important game and um, leading into finals, particularly important to get these wins. Yeah, a huge improvement. There's lots of pressure. We matched it with North uh, for majority of the game. Just a little few tweaking for one-on-ones, but really proud of the girls' efforts and um, we keep coming in hard. Port's number one draft pick, Wyala's Hannah Ewings, is always making a mark on the game, but the team as a whole continues to struggle, though their potential is there for all to see. Over on the Gold Coast, Adelaide dropped to fourth on the ladder following a drubbing by ladder leaders, Brisbane, a rare loss for the Crows. The Lions surging ahead of the competition at Metricon Stadium, winning 8-5-53 to 4-7-31. I thought we started pretty strongly, but from second quarter onwards, the uh, Lions pretty much owned the game. Their pressure was just at a higher level than ours, uh, and we weren't able to, you know, weren't able to sort of manage that pressure well. Just two rounds left before finals. Daniel Pizarro, Seven Spencer Golf News. Time now to take a look at what's happening in the weather with Alex Sykes. Alex, how was the start to the working week? There was a spattering of rain around parts of the region. Maddie, 0.2 of a millimetre falling in places like Snowtown, Sojuna, Cummins and Port Lincoln. In terms of today's temperatures, it was quite warm. Port Augusta reached a touch over 26 degrees, 25 the top in Kadena. Cooper Pedy cracked 30 degrees at 2.53 this afternoon. Looking more broadly at today's weather map, Broken Hill recorded 23 degrees, 24 in Woodna, a modest 19 degrees in Port Lincoln. Taking a look at the satellite image now. Widespread cloud over South Australia is bringing showers and scattered thunderstorms, mainly in the north and west. Clearer conditions in the southeast. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now, and we'll start with the Gulf waters. East to northeasterly winds 10 to 20 knots from around dawn to early afternoon. Seas up to 1.5 metres and south to southwesterly swell below a metre, increasing up to 1.5 metres. Possible showers in Port Lincoln tomorrow set to reach a high of 20 degrees, showers and 22 in Cleve. Possible heavy rain around Woodna between 14 and 23 degrees.
23 in Whale as well. Chance of heavy rain around Port Augusta, a high of 24 degrees there. A shower or two in Kadena also heading for 24 tomorrow. Let's make that one more. 24 in Port Pirie as well. A shower or two and 19 in Clare and a possible afternoon thunderstorm in Broken Hill, 21 degrees. Taking a look at Wednesday's weather forecast now, possible heavy falls in Wala, Port Augusta and Port Pirie between 21 and 23 degrees. The Bureau says storms are possible in the Iron Triangle, possible thunderstorm in Broken Hill as well, with heavy rainfall expected up to 40 millimetres, heading for a top of 20. Moving on to Thursday's outlook, slightly less severe weather around the far west of New South Wales, still a very high chance of showers, 22 degrees, 22 in Wyala as well, 23 in Port Piri and Kadena, a high chance of morning showers in Port Augusta, 24. And finally, taking our first look at Friday's forecast, much clearer conditions to end the working week. Possible showers and 24 in Broken Hill and Port Pirie. The rest of the region will be partly cloudy, 21 and 30 degrees, 27 in Port Augusta. And that's all the weather from me for tonight. I'll see you soon with an update. It's back to you, Maddie. Thanks for that, Alex. And that's the local news this Monday. I'm Madeline Kerr. From all of us here, thanks for joining us. I'll have updates a little later, but until then, enjoy your evening. Good night.